immediately after taking all this, selling all his resources, he can buy the pearl. Such a huge cost was the pearl. Listen to me very carefully. This man never argued about the price. The word of God never says so. Say so. He never argued to the buyer, to the, to the seller, the price to be brought low. He never thought, I will go back, earn some more money, come back and then buy this pearl. He never thought, some point of time, the price of this pearl will come down, then I will come and buy it. This man's love for the pearl was so supreme, was so supreme in his mind, immediately he went back, sold everything he had, came back, paid the price and bought the pearl. This pearl represents Jesus in this morning. This pearl represents heaven in this morning, eternal life. We must be giving to, willing to give up anything and everything to follow Christ in our life. If something is pulling you back, Greetings to all of you in Jesus' name this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I think it's a great privilege for me sharing God's word with you in this time. Almost when I was doing uh, Masters with Arun in Madurai American College, God touched me and he called me for his ministry. I submitted my life for God and right now God has been using me in a small way for his glory in few parts of India. In this morning time, as I am talking from India, I would like to share with you what God has put in my heart for you. During the earthly life of Jesus Christ, one instance happened in his life during his ministry. During his ministry, Jesus became very angry. One particular day, as he went into the temple of God, the word of God says he became so angry with the things that are happening around him in the temple. And he took a whip of cords and he chased the people away from the temple. When he chased the people out, he told, You have made my father's house, house a house of merchandise, a house of business. This instance that has happened in the ministry of Jesus Christ has been mentioned in the three Gospels. But in the three Gospels, it has been portrayed in two different ways. One, it is said that Christ said to them, after he became angry, after chasing them out, you have made my father's house a house of merchandise. In another gospel it is written, Christ said, you have made my father's house a den of robbers. The question that was troubling my mind, is it one instance that happened in Christ's life that is portrayed by three different gospel writers differently? Or is it two different instances but happened at two different times in Christ's life that has been told like this? When I was trying to understand this by the various theologians of different denominations, majority of the theologians, they have come to a conclusion this instance has happened twice in Christ's ministry. One at the beginning of his earthly ministry, that is after his first miracle at the marriage at Cana, and the second instance has happened just before, that is exactly at the time of his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, before his crucifixion. The question that was troubling my mind, is it, isn't it all that sufficient for an omnipotent God to cleanse the temple once, 
Is it necessary for the God of heaven to cleanse the temple twice? Thing is that when he cleansed the temple for the first time, Jesus said, You have made my father's house a house of beckondite, a house of business. After three years, at the end of his ministry, when he is cleansing the temple the second time, he said, You have made my father's house a den of robbers. Listen to me carefully, brothers and sisters in Christ. First time I was cleansing, the temple was like a place of business. Three years later, the temple has become a den of robbers. The condition has become very worse. Let me tell you in this morning time as I am talking to you from India, when Christ entered into our life for the first time, when he came into our hearts, into our minds, when he took a whip of cards through his holy power, when he whipped out all the sins out of our life, for the first time when he came, our lives were like business center. But as the Holy Spirit tells to me in this morning time, I tell you, sometimes many of our lives, even after Christ coming into our hearts for the first time, few years later, our hearts, our minds, are sometimes they have become like den of robbers. The condition has become worse. We have moved away from the narrow road and we are slowly dripping off into the broad way. The Bible never says that believers will move out of the narrow way and go into the broad road in an overnight. It is a slow, gradual process which you can't even imagine where worldliness compromises we slowly slip into our minds. We will not understand, but one fine morning we will come to realize we are just an empty hollow shell with a form of godliness, but without power in our lives, as said in Timothy. I would like to share with you in this morning time from the life of Peter about the call that he had for, from God in his life. This call that is mentioned in the Gospel of Luke chapter 5, as far as my understanding is concerned, is the second call that God gave him. That is not the first call. You can check the Gospels. This is the second call that God called Peter in his life. This chapter, fifth chapter of Gospel of Luke, this story is known to even a small child in Christendom. The story is this. That Peter went catching fish whole of the night. He tried all his best. He did, not, he did not catch a single fish. The next morning, he listened to the words of God and he experienced a huge miracle and he got two huge boats full of fishes, thank God. This story is known even to a small child in Christian. But there are certain other things quite deep that the Holy Spirit has revealed in the Bible. If you go through this Gospel of Luke chapter 5, the first 13 verses, you can go back, you can, as I am preaching, sharing the God's word with you, you can go through it. The instance is like this. One morning, our Lord Jesus Christ came down to the lake of Gennesaret early morning. This lake of Gennesaret has a other name in the Bible also that is called as the lake of Galilee. It is the same water body called by two different names. Lake of Gennesaret also Sea of Galilee. As our Lord reached that lake in the morning this news that Christ has reached this area was spreading like wildfire around the place. There were about 10 small villages around this lake, archaeologists say. 10 small villages. So when Christ reached that place, people from all these villages, they came rushing to see Jesus Christ. Some people came 
for a miracle that they wanted to have in their life. Some people came to listen and to receive a solace of word for their troubled heart. In matter of few hours, early in the morning, might be a couple of hours, the whole lake, the shore was filled with people, crowd of people, sea of people, I can say to you. The crowd was so huge that Christ, our Lord, has to ask the fisherman who was standing there, Peter, can I use your boat? And Peter permitted him to use his boat. The word of God says, he got into one of the boats, they pushed the boat little into the water, and from the boat, he started preaching unto the people. Listen to me very carefully. The greatest preacher this world has ever seen, or the world will ever see, used an ordinary boat as a pulpit to preach God's word. The greatest preacher, the creator, the sustainer, the redeemer, he used an ordinary boat to preach God's word. We as believers of God, as children of God, any place is a pulpit for us to share God's word. You might be traveling in a bus, you might be in a hospital, you might be in your office place. Use your place as a pulpit to share God's word with, with his people. Christ was preaching God's word. The crowd from the lake of Gennesaret, they were all gathered there. People from all over the place, they were gathered there with a lot of longings. Everybody had come there with a longing in their heart. But there was only one person in the crowd that was standing there because of situation has placed him to stand there. That is Peter. Everybody in the crowd, they have come with some longing, with some aspiration, with some need in their heart. But Peter was standing there because of some compulsion. The compulsion might have been this. See, the previous night he must have told his wife that he is going to catch fish, he is going to come back. That was his profession. He is going to catch fish, he is going to come back. He is going to sell the fish in the market. But after catching, trying a whole of the night, he did not catch a single fish. Now he must have thought, if I go back to my home without anything, my wife will give a big sermon unto me. I have to listen to that. He was standing there just to avoid uh, getting a big sermon from his wife. He thought, he must have thought, this sermon from this man must be better than listening to his wife. The second thing is that, the compulsion was this, he was standing there waiting when Christ will finish his preaching, he can get his boat back, tie it up and go. So Peter was standing there, listening to God's word, because of compulsion, not because of need in his heart. People were all there waiting. Peter was there. Listen to me, very important this morning. Not only people were there, Peter was there. This is what the Holy Spirit wants to convey to you in this morning time. The fishes from the lake of Gennesaret or from the Sea of Galilee, every fish, from the tiny one to the bigger one, Every fish, they came to listen to the word of God. Believe me, in prayers, all the fishes from the lake of Gennesaret, they came to listen to the word of God. You might ask me, Brother Stanley, how do you know that? Where do you get this theology? As I finish this message, you will understand that that is true. After Christ finished his preaching, when a, normally when a preacher finishes his preaching, the preacher will give an altar call, asking people, to come forward, to give their lives unto the Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, after finishing his sermon, told to Peter, understanding the need that he had in his mind. Peter was standing there because of frustration. He had a defeated mind. Christ told to Peter, Peter, you throw your nets into the deep waters. Very close by he showed a place. Listen to the word of God very carefully. Peter never had an explicit obedience. Peter never said, Okay, Lord, I will do it. If you listen to the word of God very carefully, the verse 5 in Luke chapter 5, Peter said, Master, we have worked hard all night 
and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. Listen to me very carefully. Peter was a fisherman right from his birth. He belonged to the fisherman family. His father took Peter right from his small childhood into this lake every morning and evening. Peter knew because of his experience in fishing what time, which type of fish will be available at which spot. I can tell you in modern terminology, Peter must have been a PhD in fishing, such an expert in fishing, but an expert had tried all the night and he did not get a single fish. So in his mind, Peter was thinking, as far as fishing is concerned, I am an expert. I am strong in my life. If you say something about my weak areas, I will listen. As far as fishing is concerned, I am very strong. That was the attitude. That was the thought that was in Peter's mind. See, all of us have this kind of notion. We think we are strong in some areas of our life, as Peter thought. We divide our life into many compartments. Spiritual life, family, education, relationships, economics, finance matters. We divide our life into many compartments as we have, a, as we have rooms in our home. And we tell the Lord, Lord, these compartments I can handle. I have strength to handle these areas in my life. This particular compartment in my life is very weak. I need your presence. That is what we do in our life normally. And we tell the Lord, Lord, this weak area, I want your power. I want your grace to overcome. But believe me, in this morning time, there is no area that is quite strong. The devil cannot touch you. This arch deceiver, this Lucifer, this fallen angel, has tried every brain nerve of every human being since the time of Adam. The greatest controversy that is happening in this earth is not for the control of a nation. It is for the control of the brain nerves of mankind. It is the every thought that man thinks in this earth, that you think in this morning time. Every thought. We cast our oath either for God or we cast our oath either for the devil. The great controversy happening in our life, in our mind, is the light between, fight between truth and error. Light and darkness. God and Satan. Peter thought in his mind, I am strong. I don't need your power in that area. We sometimes think. But our Lord sometimes sends problems in our strongest areas. Because he wants even the strongest areas to be surrendered into his high hand. He wants even that area to be used, to be filled with his Holy Spirit. Because sometimes, even in the strongest areas, devil can defeat us. So before that, God sends some problems into our life. To make us to surrender our, that particular area into his hand at this morning time. I told you, Fishers listen to, came to listen to God's word. Throughout the word of God, throughout the history, you can see that animals have obeyed God's word. There was a time when the whole earth was to be destroyed by water, when a man of God preached out his heart for 120 years, when only eight people were saved in the ark of salvation, Noah's time. Only eight were saved out of 120 years of preaching. But animals came two by two, pair by pair into the ark of God. They have listened to God's word. You know the story of Sadrach and Meshach and Abednego. Story of Daniel and Lion's Den. We used to sing a song that God tied the mouth of lions. In modern technology I can tell you, God sent an email message, an email to the brain nerves of the lion, that my son is inside, take care of him. And lion listened to God's word, lions listened to God's word. You know the story of Jonah, when he was thrown into the water, the problem was not much for Jonah, I can tell you in this morning, the problem was much for the fish actually. Before Jonah was thrown into the water, 
God sent a message to the brain nerve of the fish. And the fish obeyed God's word. It went and stood in a place in a particular direction, in a particular degree, to swallow Jonah. The fish had to keep Jonah safely for some time and to have to, and to, have to vomit, it, vomit him in the shore. I can tell you, animals have listened to God's word. Birds coming and feeding Elijah. Birds listened to God's word and they said Elijah, they were missionaries of God. So there's a great philosopher, my name is G.K. Chesterton. One of the greatest philosophers this world has ever seen. G.K. Chesterton. He says, we talk about wild animals, but the wildest of all is human being. God talked with Peter, and God told Peter, Peter, you throw it into the deep waters. Peter had an ego. That's why he said to him, Lord, I tried all night. With all my experience, I have tried it. Anyway, because you are saying so, I am going to put the nets into the deep waters. See, our Lord asked Peter to throw the nets into the deep waters, the place where the fishes have gathered to listen to God's word. Listen to me. It is that place where all the fishes have gathered. Listen to me very, very carefully as the Lord leads me. When Peter was about to throw the nets into the water, all the fishes, they had a small get together. They had a small discussion. You know what they talked to each other? As the Holy Spirit tells me. Every fish, they had a discussion. All the fishes together. Our creator, our creator has come to a place. Now, trusting on us, he is asking this man to throw the nets into the water. If we, if we run away looking at the nets, our creator will be ashamed. He will be put to shame. So when Peter was about to throw the nets, all the fishes decided together, we voluntarily will go and follow to the nets of this man. That is the only time in this earth's history where fishes came and fell into the net. That is the only time in this earth's history. Never it has happened, never it will happen. When Peter threw the nets, all the fishes came and fell. Those who are listening to God's word, they came and fell into the nets of Peter. That is why when Peter was about to take the nets, the word of God says, the nets were about to break. Thank God. And when Peter was not able to pull the nets off, he had to wave his hands to his friend James and John. They had to come and help Peter to take the nets out of the water. The word of God says, two huge boats full of fishes. Praise God. An expert trying a thing whole of the night. An expert. Some of you are sitting there and listening. Might be experts in some area. You have tried something in your life again and again. You have failed. Now the Lord is saying unto you, give that portion of your life. That area of your life that you are thinking strong to myself in this morning. I want to do a miracle in your life in this morning. The same miracle I did for Peter. Peter did not imagine in his whole career he will get two huge boats full of fishes. God can, God can do for you in this morning time by his omnipotent power that he cannot do it for your own self in this morning time. Just give your life for Jesus Christ. The word of God says two huge boats full of fishes. Praise God. Such a great miracle. Peter, his friends have to pull the boats towards the shore and they are throwing the fishes in the shore. That's what the fishermen do. They were just drying the nets. All the fishes were all fallen down on the shore. It was just close by in the waters. The place where they caught the fish and where they threw down. It was a very close by place actually. Looking at this miracle, the word of God says, you can go through it in verse 8. When Peter saw this, this miracle happening, Peter fell at the feet of Jesus Christ and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. 
Peter was just down at the feet of Jesus Christ. When you meet the Lord in your life, that's the only statement you can make. Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. When the presence of God, when the scene of Calvary, when you see the love suffering of our Jesus Christ, when you meet him face to face in your spiritual life, the only thing that a man can say, no other statements, Lord, I'm a sinful man. I'm not worthy, Lord. As Peter was falling down at the feet of Jesus Christ, the fishes were having their last heartbeats, about to die. About to die. They were having the last heartbeats, last palpitations in their heart. But they saw with their own eyes this man Peter at the feet, at the feet of Jesus Christ. They were dying thinking in their mind because of our life because of our commitment this man has given his life for Jesus Christ the fishes knew before their death because of their commitment because of their surrender this man has given his life for Jesus Christ I tell you brothers and sisters in Christ this fishes never knew this man is going to become the greatest disciple of Jesus. The fishers never knew this man is going to preach a sermon in the day of Pentecost and almost the whole city of Jerusalem is going to be converted. The fishers never knew that. I tell you in this morning time, many of us are like fishers in this world, unnoticed by people. Unnoticed by people. You might be rich, poor, educated, unnoticed. I tell you in, the car, in this morning time, if by the commitment of a single ordinary fish, which is not known to anybody, which we have never imagined, the value of a fish, which we normally take as a food, if this fish, fish of sacrifice, can bring into the ark of salvation a powerful man of God, what about you and me? Because of the commitment of a fish, this fish is a great preacher by name Peter, came into the ark of God. He re-surrendered his life into the ark of salvation. Committed his life. And he said to Christ, I will come all the way. His commitment was so. Looking at this miracle, I tell you this time, if fishes surrender can make a huge difference and make a great preacher to follow Christ, a man to become a great preacher, how about you and me in this morning time? I tell you, God has a great plan for all of us. A plan greater than that you have for your own self. Than the parents have for you in this morning. We are living in the last days of this death history. And God is counting on each and every one of us. And he tells to you, I don't want your money. I don't want your degrees. I don't want your property. God says to me, I want you. I'm a very, very possessive God. I want you. I don't want you to be shared with the, the devil in this morning time. I want you to give yourself 100%. I want your minds given unto me. I want your hearts given unto me. Listen to me very carefully. Peter, the word of God never says, Peter took all the fishes that he experienced in the miracle went, sold everything in the market, got some money, came and gave to his wife and said goodbye. He never said that. The Bible never records that such a kind of a story. The word of God says, after experiencing this miracle, after getting his dream, ambition fulfilled in his life, two huge boats full of fishes, the word of God says, Peter left, left everything and he followed Christ. The peak of his career, a mighty miracle. It is like you people who are sitting there, a postdoctoral studies, a Nobel Prize for education, getting that. And after quitting that and saying, I'm going to follow Christ in this ministry. Peter getting the best catch of his life, the best dream as a fisherman getting fulfilled, did not look at the miracle. 
did not look at the thing that has come into his life but said that is not important for me and he followed Christ all the way my question for you brothers in this morning time what do you see the other question I'm asking you is that what is that we are failing to see that is not making us to follow him all the way the only thing the only character for those who are going to go to heaven is this they the people who are going to go to heaven will never have a divided heart they will not have half surrender that is the only character the word of god says about those who are going to go to heaven they will never have half surrender they will be willing to give up anything and everything for christ let me tell you in this morning time there is a story in the bible a parable mentioned in three gospels about a rich merchant man went in search of the most precious pearl in this earth there are only three verses in every gospel about this a very short story the word of god never says how far he went to buy this pearl the word of god never says so but but the holy spirit says to me he went all through the towards the world those are parable he must have gone all over the world to search the most precious pearl that he wanted to buy but according to the record of the bible this merchant man saw the pearl and he asked the price of the pearl to this person who was selling to his surprise he found out the cost was such a huge cost he had to sell his home he had to sell his business he had to sell take every penny out of his bank account only after taking all this selling all his resources he can buy the pearl such a huge cost was the pearl listen to me very carefully this man never argued about the price the word of god never says so say so he never argued to the buyer to the to the seller the price to be brought low he never thought i will go back earn some more money come back and then buy this pearl he never thought some point of time the price of this pearl will come down then i will come and buy it this man's love for the pearl was so supreme was so supreme in his mind immediately he went back sold everything he had came back paid the price and bought the pearl this pearl represents jesus in this morning this pearl represents heaven in this morning eternal life we must be giving to willing to give up anything and everything to follow christ in our life if something is pulling you back the word of god sometimes gives us some very strong advices you should not love your father your mother your husband your wife your children more than me are not worthy of me the word of god says put christ first in your life word of god says seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness seek him first that everything will be added unto you i would like to tell you believers in this morning time christ is coming soon the things that are happening around us are showing that his coming is so near even beyond what we can comprehend but be rest be very clear the time is near but the word of god may god says nobody knows the hour not even the angels the angels of heaven but my father only we may know when the time is near the time is near even at the doors the word of god says but we will never know the time or the hour we have lots of predictions prophets saying this and that you can show us the signs of the times but nobody can predict the time, exact hour that is against the word of god i shared with you a little gospel i would like to recollect to you and say to you the greatest preacher used a ordinary boat as a pulpit number 2 someone might be in, inside the congregation listening this word of god out of compulsion as peter would have stand, stood there in that morning out of compulsion most of you are listening words of god word in this morning have come there with a longing to listen to god's word someone might be inside someone might be inside this group who is listening because of some compulsion today is the day where we go to our god i tell you god has come unto you as he came into peter's life he has come unto you in this morning if you are out with frustration if you have a defeated heart if you have a thirsty heart 
a parched land. God is there in this morning time. The fishes gave their life for Jesus. And a huge minister for God was ready in this earth. God is saying to you, how much are you more important than fish? I gave my life for you on the cross of Calvary. What is that you can give unto me back? When I look into myself, in my own personal life, I don't see how I can be saved. Tears drop out of my eyes. When I look at my own self sometimes, I don't see how I can be saved. But when I look at Christ on the cross, the Spirit says unto me, I don't think how, can, how I can be lost. Amazing grace. God says unto you in this morning time, my brother, my sister, there is a great plan I have for you, for your family, for your children. Only one thing I want to use that, give your life unto me. I want to mold it and fashion it. I want to use it for my own kingdom. As you give your life unto Jesus in this time, I would like to pray for you. Shall we close our eyes in prayer? Yenna kodu pe Yesu ukku Yennil onrum illai ayya Yellam en Yesu ve Yennil onrum illai ayya Yellam en Yesu ve Yenna kodu pe மீப்பனாய் நான் இருந்தாலோ ஆட்டுக்குட்டி நான் தருவேனே புல்லுள்ள இடங்களில் என்னை மேய்க்கும் நல்ல மெய்ப்பருக்கு புல்லுள்ள இடங்களில் என்னை மேய்க்கும் நல்ல மெய்ப்பருக்கு என்னில் ஒன்றும் இல்லை ஐயா எல்லாம் இயேசுவே என்னில் ஒன்றும் இல்லை ஐயா எல்லாம் இயேசுவே என்ன கொடுப்பே என்னை கொடுப்பே இயேசுக்கு ஜீவ பலியாக என்னை ஏற்று கொள்ளும் ஏ செய்யரே என்னை கொடுப்பேன் என்ன கொடுப்பாய் உன் இயேசுக்கு உன்னில் ஒன்றும் இல்லையப்பா எல்லாம் என் இயேசுவே உன்னில் ஒன்றும் இல்லையப்பா எல்லாம் உன் இயேசுவே என்ன கொடுப்பா எங்களை நேசிக்கிறாங்களா ஆண்டவரே நல்ல வேலைக்காய் மக்க நன்றி ராஜா முது வார்த்தைகளுக்காக உங்க நன்றி செலுத்துவார் சுவாமி ஆண்டவரே இந்த உலகத்திலே சுவாமி எங்களை காட்டிலும் நீதிமான்கள் அறிவாளிகள் மேதைகள் இருக்கும் பொழுது அற்பமான எங்களை உமது பிள்ளைகளாக அழைத்ததற்காக உங்க நன்றி செலுத்துகிற ராஜா நீ என்னை தெரிந்து கொள்ளவில்லை நான் உன்னை தெரிந்து கொண்டு என்று சொன்னீரே சுவாமி அதற்காக நன்றி தகப்பனேன் எங்கள் தாயின் கர்ப்பத்திலே ஆண்டவரை தெரிந்து கொண்டதற்காக உங்க நன்றி செலுத்துவோம் சுவாமி எங்களை இத்தனை காலங்களாக எங்களை நேசித்து வருவதற்காக உங்க நன்றி செலுத்துவோம் கல்வாரி சிலுவையிலே ராஜா எங்களை காட்டின அன்பிற்காக தகப்பனேன் எங்களுக்காக நீட்ட பாடுகளுக்காக உங்களுக்கு நன்றி செலுத்துவோம் சுவாமி 
இந்த நேரத்திலும் கூட தகப்பனேன் இந்த செய்தியை கேட்டுக்கொண்டிருக்கும் எல்லா பிள்ளைகளுக்காக அடியை ஜெபிக்கிறேன் பேதுருவை போல இருக்கும் பிள்ளைகளுக்காக வாஞ்சியோடு வந்திருக்கும் பிள்ளைகளுக்காக நான் ஜெபிக்கிறேன் சுவாமி தாகமான நிலத்திலே தனியதை ஊற்று விரட்டு சொன்ன சுவாமி இந்த நேரத்திலும் கூட உங்கள் ஜீவ தண்ணீரை உங்கள் பிள்ளைகளுக்கு தரும்படியாய் அடிய செஞ்சுகிறேன் ஒரு வார்த்தை சொல்லும் ஆண்டவர் இந்த காலை நேரத்தில் உங்கள் பிள்ளைகளுடைய வாழ்க்கை ஆவிக்குரிய நேரத்தில் உமக்கும் அவளுக்கும் அவர்களுக்கு உள்ள உறவுகளை தகப்பனே ஒரு புதிய அத்தியாயத்தை நீ ஏற்படுத்தும்படியாக நான் செஞ்சுகிறேன் சுவாமி இன்னும் நெருங்கி கிட்டி சேர்த்துக் கொள்ளும் ஆண்டவரை உலகத்திலே ரகமாய் ஓடிக்கொண்டிருக்கும் உலகத்திலே தகப்பனே ஆண்டவரை உமக்காக வந்திருக்கும் பிள்ளைகளை தகப்பனை ஏற்றுக்கொள்ளும்படியாய் அடிய ஜெபிக்கிறேன் உச்சந்தலை முதல் உள்ளம் கால் வரைக்கும் கத்தருடைய ஆவியானவர் ஆண்டவரை ரத்தம் சுத்திகரிக்கும்படியாய் அடிய கெஞ்சுகிறேன் சுவாமி ஒவ்வொரு குடும்ப பிள்ளைகளுக்கும் அவர் குடும்பங்களுக்காக பிள்ளைகளுக்காக அடிய ஜெபிக்கிறேன் ஏசுவின் நாமத்துல கத்தர் ஒவ்வொருவரின் தொட்டு ஆசிர்வதிப்பீராக வலைவனத்தில் இருக்கும் பிள்ளைகளுக்காக ஜெபிக்கிறேன் சோர்வில் இருக்கும் பிள்ளைகளுக்காக ஜெபிக்கிறேன் ஏசுவின் நாமத்துல ஒரு வார்த்தையின் பரிசு பண்ண நீ தொட்டு பலப்படுத்துவதற்காக உங்களுக்கு நன்றி செலுத்துகிறேன் நீ சீர்படுத்தும் ஆண்டவரை நீ ஸ்திரப்படுத்தும் பலப்படுத்தும்படியா நான் ஜெபிக்கிறேன் ஆண்டவரை ஜெபி கேட்டுக்கொண்ட விண்ணப்பங்களுக்காக சுகரமாக இருக்கும் பிள்ளைகளுக்காக ஆண்டவரே குடும்பத்தை விட்டு தூரதர்சன இருக்கும் பிள்ளைகளுக்காக அடிய ஜெபிக்கிறேன் ரத்த கோட்டைக்குள்ளாய் இந்த பிள்ளைகளை மூடி மறைக்கும்படியா ஜெபிக்கிறேன் பலவீனம் நோய் சுகவீனத்திற்காக அடிய ஜெபிக்கிறேன் ஏ சிவின் நாமத்தில் இந்த வேளையில் உங்கள் வல்லமீனாலை கொடுத்து சுகமாக்கும்படியா ஜெபிக்கிறேன் இந்த அருமையான சலோசிப்பை நீர் ஆசிர்வதியும் ஆண்டவர் இதில் பங்கு பெறக்கூடிய ஒவ்வொரு பிள்ளைகளுக்காக அடிய ஜெபிக்கிறேன் தொட்டு ஆசிர்வதிப்பீராக சுவாமி விசேஷமாய் தகப்பன எல்லாரும் ஆண்டவரை ஜெப வாழ்க்கையில ஒவ்வொரு நெருங்கி சேரக்கூடிய நேரங்களிலே அதிகப்படுத்தும்படியாக நான் ஜெபிக்கிறேன் சுவாமி அவர்களுக்காக மாத்திரமல்ல அவரை சார்ந்திருப்பவர்களுக்காக மாத்திரமல்ல சுவாமி தேசத்திற்காக ஜெபிக்கிறேன் ஆண்டவரை ஆண்டவருக்குள்ளாக ஆண்டு வரே ஒரு மனம் திரும்பி ஆவிய தேசத்துக்கு தரும்படியாக நான் ஜெபிக்கிறேன் சுவாமி லிவிங் வாட்டர் ஃப்ளோஸ் அவுட் ஆஃப் ஃப்ளோ அவுட் ஆஃப் திஸ் திஸ் மார்னிங் டைம் நீ போட்டுக்கிறேன் அப்பா அவன் சுதிக்கிறேன் ஆண்டு வரே நல்ல வேலைக்காய் உங்க ஸ்தோத்திரம் அருமையான வார்த்தைகளுக்காக நன்றி தகப்பனே துதி உமக்கு மாத்திரம் அப்பா உமக்கு மாத்திரம் ஆண்டவரே ஒப்பு கொடுக்கும் பிள்ளைகளுக்காய் அடிய ஜெபிக்கிறேன் ஆண்டவரே எடுத்து பயன்படுத்தும் ஏசுக்கு நாபத்துல அவர்கள் ஜபத்தின் மூலமாக தேசங்கள் அசைத்தும் அப்பா குடும்பங்கள் இயேசுக்குள்ளாய் வரட்டும் இயேசுவின் நாமத்தை எனக்கு காலை வேலையில தொட்டு ஆஸ்வதிப்பீராக உங்களது வார்த்தைகள் வெறுமையாய் போய்விட வேண்டாம் அப்பா ஒன்று நூறுமாய் பலன் சில கிருபை செய்வீராக சகல புதிய மக்கள் எடுத்துக் கொள்கிறேன்ப்பா இயேசுவின் நாமத்தில் ஜெபிக்கிறேன் என்று பரம்பதாவே ஆமன் ஆமன்